Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. My life was pretty boring this week, so let's jump into what I finished and what I'm reading and all of that stuff. So I finished A Lady by Midnight by Tessa Dare last weekend. It scratched my romance itch. I can't say that it was really great storytelling because it had some elements in it that I didn't find credible, logical. I, don't, I honestly don't know much about the Regency series or the Regency time period but there were just some things that felt off about the book when it came to the historical setting. I liked the relationship between Kate and Samuel. That was fun. Like I said, it scratched the itch that I needed. And this is a series that I jump into every couple of years, so maybe in a couple of years I'll read another one. I then finished Hissy Fit by Mary Kay Andrews. And before this video cup goes up, my free little library video should go up and we're where I talk more about this. Overall, I like the book, but I felt like the pacing and the structure was wrong for the story. The synopsis makes this, makes you think that this is a romance. It is not. It is a mystery. And I wouldn't even call the romance the B plot. They have like meet cute moments, but that's all. And then the scene at the end where they are getting together, you don't feel any payoff for it. So the romantic uh, non-subplot, I think, was not well done, but everything related to the mystery was well done. And then there was one character that I felt was only for information reveal. Keely was more of a passive main character and her friend did a lot of the research for the mystery for her, and then would come back and report be like this is what I found out and while it feels true to life it's not satisfying in a book so like I said overall I liked it but there are elements that I think I think if the author rewrote this it could be stellar but it was published in like 2004 I don't think it's gonna go to rewrite or anything. You read it and tell me what you think. Then I finished Fear by Gabriel Chevalier. This is a World War One fiction novel written by a World War One combatant. You really feel like you are in warfare as he's describing the war that is happening in the trenches, being in the trenches and the time surrounding it. And I thought all of that was really well done. What I did not like was when the author then shared their ideas about race and women and went into a purple prose literary it, in between the war scenes. This author has a very strong message of war is bad and war should not happen and he beats you over the head with it. But this book is still relevant today and wars today. So it is worth a read as long as you can ignore the racism and the, misog the, and the misogyny and realize that those are things of the time. It's the parts about where he talks about war, being in war, and then he philosophizes with war if you can get past the purple prose. The points he makes are salient. Um, and then after that I needed a palette cleanser so I picked up Thornwood and I was enjoying this. This is a middle grade about Sleeping Beauty or actually it's about the sister of Sleeping Beauty and then the author decided to put in the, the magician in the castle went to this secret school that had used magic for sports and immediately it's supposed to make you immediately think of Harry Potter without actually saying it and so then it's tying this world with that one and I didn't like it it bounced me out of the story and there are some other things but that one was the main one and so then I skim read the rest so I didn't technically DNF it and I didn't technically read it but I got to what the major points were and this is cute and I would say, yeah, give it to a middle grade reader, but this 
was not written for me and did not work for me personally. I think a middle grade w reader would really enjoy this story, especially because Bri yeah, Bryony has the narc and the she's an 11 year old and her sister's 16 and so just being that sister going what the hell are you doing to your older one i remember my little sister did that so this is the, the relationship between the sisters is very relatable it just didn't work for me and then because i finished fear and i have and then my buddy read of how do you live started so i read the little beginning of this so far and i'm really enjoying it and we'll continue reading this into over the weekend and into the next week and I did not pick this up this week. Again, it's not because I don't want to. I am enjoying it. It's just, when I know when I want to sit down and read it, I want to have a large block of time. And when I've had large blocks of time, I have done some other things, which I'll talk about later in the, this video. So still working on finishing this. Sorry, I got called away. So if the angle looks different, that's what's going on. So what I was, think what I was thinking was, I've heard some discussions about tomes or chunky books, and this is a chunky book for me. And I've noticed that, well, I'm, like I said, I'm enjoying reading it, and really fear did put some interesting context on this, since it seems Baladere is more like the French, and then where they are would be like African colonies. Chunky books are intimidating. <laughs> I am going to finish this because I want to. I'm enjoying it. Um, yeah. So my reading plans are to read these. And for my writing wrap up, I haven't been writing. Just in that. And this week I haven't even been daydreaming. I've just been in a slump. It happens. Other media has been catching my attention more and more. So, I mean, I'm, I'm on booktube. Obviously, I watch other booktubers. There is one video that I watched this week that really stood out as something that needs to be shouted out, and that is Ashley from The Bookish Realm. She did a discussion video about Texas, Tennessee, and Florida wanting to ban ebooks and ebook platforms. She went into all the reasons why this is a bad idea. She is a librarian by trade, and so she talked about how one, as a parent, it's your job to work with your kids and help decide what they can and should be reading. It's not your job to tell another child of another parent what they should be reading. And then she also pointed out it's against accessibility. Even if these laws pass, they're good, there's going to be ADA challenges because a lot of older people use audiobooks and ebooks which they get from these ebook platforms because it's easier to read. People with sight issues, they use these platforms because then they can enlarge the text and it makes it easier for them to read. I just the whole concept that a state, you know, three states are willing to ban a way of reading. It's like they are purposely trying to make people illiterate and dumb so that they can manipulate how they think and it pisses me off. If you feel any like way about banning ebook platforms, I would say go watch this video. I'm going to link it down below. If you live in Texas, Florida, or Tennessee, this isn't exactly an application of local politics that if you don't think this should happen, you should be finding out who your representatives are and letting them know that this is not acceptable and all the reasons why it's not acceptable. And then this week, my husband and I decided to get Paramount Plus because we want to watch the Halo series. I did not play the Halo games. I didn't really start playing video games until I was in college, but Halo is something I know my husband has played and I've watched him and my stepson play it. And so we both are interested in the series. And we were waiting for it to finish. I was at home sick earlier this week, and so we decided to get it early. I haven't started watching the Halo series, but what I did find is the challenge. This is the MTV challenge where people from like Road 
well, the original seasons were road rules, real world, and now they've taken from other reality shows. And I don't watch these other reality shows, so I don't know who these people are until they come to this one show. But the purpose of the challenge is they come together and they make teams or not, as it just depends on what the theme is. And then they do these crazy physical challenges. They work towards eliminations and they go to, it's basically whittling down to the people who get to run the final. And the final is always like a cross country marathon sort of thing. And I just enjoy it. I don't care so much for the drama or I don't care about the personal and relationship drama. I like the game drama where people are trash talking each other like, oh, you know, you should have easily been able to complete that. And as a viewer, a lot of these things, my, my husband and I will watch this and be like, oh, yeah, no, I couldn't do that. Or that that looks like fun. I'd want to do that. I don't think I could do it in the time that they're asking, but it would just be fun to try it. That has been taking up my reading time also towards the end of this week. And it's fun to kind of go back down to memory lane, especially when I'm seeing old people that I've watched before and I'm like, okay, you're still in this. You are like in your 40s. And th that has been my week 20. It's been fun. It's been crazy. But thanks and have a great day.